that I could say is that I'm overwhelmed. I feel undeserved, deservant. <coughs> and I'm truly grateful. First of all, I want to thank this church. When I got here, Helen and I James and Logan were babies. And I'm sorry, that's what I got. That's my heart right now, y'all. That's my room. That's my road dog. Every one of my grandchildren during their life, God allowed me a chance to have them special to myself. Little James, my grandson, is 18 now. And I got a grandbaby, great grandbaby out there who is in the house also, we. So, as we were riding to the church, I thought, is this the last time? The 17 miles that we have driven five and six times every week. God says, no, not at all. You see, I only did this because I saw Michael retire. <laughs> and then right before that, Reginald retired. So I said, what the hell? I'm going to <laughs> It seems to be working for them. <laughs> And like you, I had to actually go to Brockton to witness this because nobody believed that Dr. Michael Walker was leading the Messiah Church. Church, you have taught me more than I've taught you. You've loved on me in a way that my imperfections didn't seem so large. My family, need a max that up. My family. I want y'all to see my family. Yeah. Yeah. My Amen. 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 Let your needle people stand up. Yeah. All of them. Amen. To my best friend, Messrs. the Amen. Amen. I don't even need to go there. That's a good lady. And I am so blessed that she chose me to be the man and the only man in her life. She fills gaps in places that you don't have any idea. Yes. She not only completes me, but she completes our family. Amen. Seven months ago, God released us from the caregiving of our mom. I went out the other day to have a talk with her and dad. And I'm convinced that they're resting very well. Yeah. And Helen would say to me, what are we going to do today? Because our routine for the last seven to ten years had been go check on Bernice. I want to thank all of my young people that I've married. Stand up. I'm looking at them all over the house. One just regret. Cal and Dan would stand up. These are the two that, that sent for me and Helen to go to uh, Padre Island and we kicked it up in there <laughs> just now just now 
As I look around, I, I don't see anybody that I eulogized. <laughs> If, if I did, I would leave <laughs> to my neighbors, my girls. Wow. My daddy was a domino. <clears throat> they were the Crozier Street yeah. Committee. And little by little, God has taken them away. My friends, my classmates. Somebody said that new friends are like silver, but old friends are like gold. Your presence today means more than you will ever know. Ira, Ernest. These are guys who know me without the priest calling. These guys know the anointing. To my children, that Ashley, that's a booger right there. <laughs> Amen. She got a mama's beauty, but my sense of humor. <laughs> and Derek, I thank you for befriending us the way you have. Rev. Patterson, <laughs> as he walked in, he came around, he says, he said, I ain't never heard no such thing as the preacher return, so I had to come see what this gonna be about. <laughs> but as quickly as I can, <laughs> it's been all about, if I can help somebody As I pass along, if I can cheer somebody, Mac, with a word, a just a song. If I can show somebody that he's traveling, God, I love you, man. Wrong. Then my living shall not. Be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. My living shall not. Be in vain. All I want to do is help somebody as I pass along in my living. I said. In vain. I want to thank God for giving to us a son with a pastor's heart. I've learned. 
things about churches, especially here, I learned first of all that God is always faithful. Always. 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 I've learned that my family is my greatest gift beyond salvation. And I wish that I had realized that earlier. I spend too much time worrying about things that I can't even remember about yesterday. I took too many critics personally. Most critics, they weren't even mad at me. I always grow stronger when I spend more time in prayer and in the Word. Yes. I've learned that my wife has endured a whole lot over this ministry. And now I need to minister to her. I've learned to be more compassionate through the deaths of my parents. And I can now understand the pain that many experience. I need to ask for forgiveness more quickly. I need friends like Dr. Kirk. To both share the joys and the challenges in ministry. I wish that my son had never seen the frustrations of pastoring this church. I've learned that life is short. Live it totally for him. Yes. Uh -huh. Every day of your life. I learned that some of my most miserable days come when I grew jealous of other people's ministries. Yes. Some of the other misery days came when I lived to please people. Rather than to please God. Yes, right. Children are young just before a season. Some of my greatest joys have been with my children and grand. We call it me time. I'm not nearly as smart as you think I am. Surprise. <laughs> I'm always wiser when I listen rather than when I speak. I'm convinced that the devil is always looking for a way to trap me. My success is not measured by the size of the church or the prestige of the organization. I've had a lot of grace shown to me and I need to pass the gift to somebody else. Some people who disagree with me may have proved right I need to mentor more and to nourish my own spirit. I'm really as delicate as I should be in sharing the gospel 
And every church has some real mean people in it. And God called me to love on them. I need to learn to fight pride more often than I'd like to admit. But David says the words that I wanted to share with you. Mr. Jacobs, good to see you. Proverbs, even his classmates are here. Wow. Yes, sir. And we all link on ice. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. The twelfth number no, chapter. Just a short verse. David says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. All right. But when the desires come in, well, it is a tree of life. All right. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. All right. But when it comes, it's like a tree of life. I want to talk about moving from broken dreams. To new beginnings. From broken dreams. God can do more with broken pieces than He can with those who are whole in their spirits. Have you ever? Had a dream. Oh, you bring that up. You ever had a dream and your dream was so real mm -hmm. that you could almost deposit it in the bank. <laughs> your dreams, this is my favorite word, and this is in the front front of the uh, that was our pastor's favorite phrase. And I'll tell you something about that in a moment. And you had planned for the wedding, but the wedding didn't take place. You made plans for the things in life that you wanted to secure for you and your family. And all of a sudden, the dream was broken. Yeah, yeah. Many of us live with broken dreams. Broken dreams will cause you to lose your joy. It will make you lose the respect for the humanity because you only see promises, promises, and promises. When we invest our lives in God, he never told us that it would be easy. I've come to realize that I have had so much passion for this place, I did not realize how worn I was. Now, I've not been asked to leave. No. They had to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the prophetic timing of God. Yeah. Yeah. And for all of you who are still angry at the way I did it, get over it. Say that. Because God did not tell me to talk to you. Right. And that was including my wife. Come on, God. Come on. And so, where do we go if the dream now had been broken? The problem that many of us have is that we get the broken dream, but we stay in the dream. 
And every broken dream that God brings by you, if you just wait on him long enough, he has a new beginning for you. Your divorce may have been ugly, but God got somebody going to love you more. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing in life, if it's the bitterness of the brokenness of yesterday, learn how to get over it. James, you have a task. That I pray for you dearly. This nation has become so ungodly that we are defying God like never before. The church has become a total business. And you can do all the business all day long, but until you love the people that comes with the passion. You see, the only reason that Jesus was able to hang around 33 years is because he had passion. And the day that I woke up and did not have the passion was the day God says you need to do something different. There is always somebody that God, we call them rams in bushes. But there is somebody in your brokenness if you just don't isolate yourself and put yourself in the way of where the blessings are. Somebody is willing and able to take you from your broken dreams to your new beginnings. You see, whenever this work gets bitter, you need to move on. God don't want no preacher fussing and cussing at his folk. And so, so, so I thank you. I receive you. I ask this body to accept him. Now, someone said, you're showing him in, ain't you? No, it's not it at all. These brothers on this front row, other than Michael, he can't vote. <laughs> These sisters who are ushers, the choir members, it is a family affair. Yeah. And I pray that as I make this move, I have taught you enough. I remember if I close, I had a vision that we were at a football stadium. And in the stadium, I brought the team to come and play that day. We had all of our uniforms on, and when I got there, I looked at the football field, and the grass had not been cut. Just happened to have a 19-inch yard. Not a ride line move. Not a push line move. Just a little bit of line move. A couple of cans of gasoline. And I was so frustrated in this vision and dream about I got out and I cut the 10 yard line. I cut the 20 yard line. Got to the 30 yard line and I looked up in the stands and them boogers was drinking beer and eating hot dogs. <laughs> And I'm cutting the grass. Yeah. Yeah. I got mad and started cussing at everybody up in the stand. You come help me cut the grass. And God said, I called you to coach the team. And I cut the grass. If you choose to cut the grass, don't get mad at God. Because he brought you over here to coach the team. Yeah. I pray that God places that so deep in the well of your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That the type of love you're going to get is different. Yeah. Old school baby booms ain't like. <laughs> and so for that, I thank you for coming. I thank you for sharing. And the best is yet to come. Yeah. Helen and I have been released now.
Release from the care of mom, and we gonna jump on some planes with tickets that ain't got no name on. <laughs> and I'm glad I said that when my boss was in the house, he uh, don't be absent from work. <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. To Brother Bailey, stand up, Reverend Bailey. Y'all didn't give him a hand. This is the man that gave a man almost at 65 one of the best positions in the Dallas Independent School District. That's all right. All right. I am preaching more at Paul Lawrence Dumbo <laughs> as I've ever preached here. All right. All right. I don't be at work at 7, but I'm at the house at 6 o'clock. I've never had that kind of passion in a while. So God has given me a new set of people that may hear me, that may love me the way you did. See you later. Amen.